Hi, so today we're going to be talking about atomic um, basics. Um, we went over, last time we went over the periodic table, so you should be comfortable with um, looking at the periodic table and reading the periodic table and pulling information out of the periodic table um, in order to answer some questions. So we're going to talk about other um, basics. So our objective today is to identify the particles that make up an atom and their charges, uh, diagram the particles that make up atoms, and distinguish between elements and compounds. So we're going to start with atomic structure first. So atoms are the building blocks of matter, and at the center of an atom is the nucleus. Um, the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged uh, subatomic particles, and neutrons have no charge. Um, electrons are found in um, what is referred to as the electron cloud uh, or the energy levels surrounding the nucleus. So electrons are negatively charged particles and they're always located um, outside of the nucleus uh, moving around in the electron cloud. So on your worksheet, uh, I'm going to walk you through this stuff and you are going to fill out the answers on your worksheet. So it says here for part I, draw uh, five protons in the nucleus of the atom. So when I draw um, protons, I draw a little plus sign. So one, uh, two, three, four, five. Those are my five protons and label them with their charge. So they're green and they're um, positively charged. Draw six neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. So I'm going to switch colors here and I'm going to draw six neutrons. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm not going to put any charge in them. They're little like donut circles, so because they have no charge. It says then draw two electrons in the first energy level. So I'm going to, again, change colors. I'm going to draw two um, electrons. So one, uh, two, and I'm going to label them with their charge. So those are going to be negative because electrons are negatively charged. It says draw three electrons in the second energy level. So one, two, and then, um, oops, I forgot this one, three. And those are, again, negatively charged right up here. And then it says what element is represented by the diagram? So we've got five protons. Um, and then we've got one, two, three valence electrons, and we'll talk a little bit, um, or you guys should know about valence electrons. We have three valence electrons. So if we look at our periodic table, we will find that our um, element that uh, we just drew here is called boron. Very nice. For atomic calculations, you need to, again, be able to read the information off the periodic table. So the number up here is what we refer to as the atomic number. And um, the atomic number represents the number of protons found in the nucleus, and it also represents the number of electrons. And when I'm writing protons and electrons, I also like to include their charge just so I can remember that, you know, those are two charged subatomic particles. All right here is the element symbol. So when reading the periodic table, those letters there are referred to as the um, um, atomic symbols. Right here is the element's name. And then down here, is um, the um, element's uh, atomic mass. And atomic mass uh, can be found by adding the number of protons found in the nucleus with the number of neutrons found in the nucleus. So you can add those two things and get the atomic mass. And um, typically the atomic mass is a decimal point because it's an average of all the different isotopes. 
Um, and then for our purposes, we'll tend to round to the nearest whole number. Um, usually we're going to end up rounding up. So how would you figure the number of protons and the number of electrons in an atom? You would use the atomic number. in order to do this. And then how would you figure the number of neutrons in an atom? So what you would do is you would take the atomic mass and then you would oops, and then you would subtract the number of protons, so a nice little equation there, in order to get the number of neutrons because as we know the atomic mass equals the number of protons and the number of neutrons. Moving on, we're going to take a look at, um, or you're going to take a look at um, the elements alongside here and using what we know about the periodic table and how the periodic table is constructed and what those symbols and numbers mean on the periodic table, you are going to complete this on your own, um, finding the number of protons, number of neutrons, and number of electrons. To get you started, I'll give you a hint. So for um, lithium, we have an atomic number of three, and we have an atomic mass of seven. So we ha should have uh, three protons because the atomic number refers to the number of protons, and we should have three electrons because the atomic number um, also refers to the number of electrons too. In order to figure out number of neutrons, we need to take seven and we'll subtract three and that will give us four. So now it's your turn to complete um, the rest of this box. Now that you've completed the rest of the box, um, we are gonna take a look at electron configuration and looking at how the electrons uh, are, where the electrons are found in the electron cloud. So there are um, um, different energy levels um, that we will be looking at. There is, um, we can take a look at this representation of an atom here, and we see that we have one, two, three different energy levels. As we look down the periodic table, there could be more than three energy levels, but for the most part, we're just gonna be dealing with elements um, that have uh, three energy levels. So uh, there only can be two electrons that are held in the first energy level. Um, the second energy level can hold um, eight um, electrons, and the third energy level can hold up to 18 electrons. Now just because it can hold up to 18 electrons doesn't mean that it needs to hold um, 18 electrons. Um, so just like a five gallon bucket, a five gallon bucket can hold up to five gallons, but it can also hold two gallons, it can also hold four gallons. Um, so just because um, the third energy level can hold 18 doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see 18 electrons in that energy level all the time. So what term is used for the electrons found in the outermost shell or the um, outermost energy level? That term is referred to as valence electrons or valence. So those electrons found in the outermost energy level or shell are referred to as valence electrons. So for number 14 it says scientists use two types of diagrams to show the electron configuration for atoms. Uh, follow your teacher's di um, directions to complete the diagrams. So there are two types of diagrams. There's a Bohr diagram which shows all electrons and then there's something called a Lewis structure. It's also sometimes referred to as a Lewis dot structure, and you'll see why. Um, dot structure. Um, and those show only the valence electrons. So we're going to take a look at sulfur. And then sulfur has an atomic number of 16, which means that I'm going to have 16 protons. And we have uh, 16 electrons as well. And then we are also, if we take 16 or 32 subtract 16, we are also going to have 16 neutrons. Fabulous. If we look at the periodic table, we are going to find that sulfur um, has um, six valence electrons. Um, so we'll start with the Bohr diagram. So the Bohr diagram is going to show all electrons. So we know that the um, sulfur has 16 electrons. And we know that the first energy level only holds two, um, two electrons. So I'm going to swap colors here to my electron color. 
and we're gonna put a dot right there and we're gonna put a dot right there and that's showing our two electrons in that first energy level. Our next energy level holds eight electrons and we are gonna go one, two, three, four, and then we're gonna come around and double up. So five, six, seven, and eight. So there is eight electrons in our second energy level, but total on our Bohr diagram, we have 10 electrons, okay? Our last energy level is going to have six electrons. So again, one, two, three, four, and then five, six. So those are our six electrons. And we said before that sulfur has six valence electrons. So if we count up the number of electrons in the outermost shell, one, two, three, four, five, six, there are six valence electrons there. Perfect. So our Bohr diagram is showing all the electrons in the various um, different energy levels that sulfur has. So for our Lewis dot structure, the Lewis dot structure only shows the valence electrons, and we know that sulfur has six, so we'd show it like this. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So there we go. Um, that's our Bohr diagram, and that is our Lewis dot structure. Um, how do you figure out how many um, energy levels you have or that an element is going to have? Remember, that's um, the number of rows, um, the number of uh, the row that they're found in on the periodic table. So if they're in the first row, they're going to, um, or the first period, they're going to have one energy level. If they're in the second row or the second period, they're going to have two energy levels. If they're in the third row or the third period, they're going to have three energy levels, and so on and so forth. So now that we know how to um, draw a Bohr diagram or complete a Bohr diagram and complete a Lewis dot structure, uh, you are going to be practicing those on your worksheet now. So for lithium, um, I'll start out with the example. For lithium here, it has an atomic mass of um, three and our atomic number of three and a mass of seven. So three is going to go here. Three is also going to go here. Seven minus um, three is four. So that's the number of neutrons um, there. Um, we know that there are only two energy or electrons that can be found in our first energy level. So we're going to draw in our two electrons, one, two, and um, we have only, so two electrons minus three, we're only going to have one. So we'll put our one um, valence electron out there. And then we're done with our Bohr diagram. And then for our Lewis dot structure, um, that's what we would put for our Lewis dot stru structure for lithium. So now take time to complete the um, rest of the problems and answer questions. Um, answer 16, um, questions 1, 2, and 3, um, referring to um, these problems up here. So element versus compound. Um, an element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down any further by either physical or chemical means. Um, there is 100 known um, elements, 92 of them are naturally occurring. Uh, the other ones are man-made, um, and each element has a unique name or symbol. So the periodic table of the elements, are they are truly elements, they can't be broken down, and 100 of those, um, or 92 of those elements are naturally occurring on the planet. Now a compound is a pure substance that is formed um, from two or more different elements. So each element has a, a chemical formula. So if we take a look at uh, sodium chloride, that's a compound. Water is also a compound. Uh, CH4, that's methane, that is also a compound. And here we have two or more elements that are combining, and those are pure substances. Uh, unique characteristics of compounds is that they have a fixed ratio. So we have one sodium to one chlorine. We have two hydrogens for every one oxygen. We have one carbon to four hydrogens. So they usually occur in a fixed ratio. Um, they're chemical and um, physically different from elements 
um, themselves and the elements that form them. So they're chemically, both chemically and physically different from the elements that form them, and they're uh, chemically and physically different than elements in general. And um, a compound can not be broken down by physical means, so you can't like break it or smash it or anything like that, um, but it can only be broken down um, chemically. So um, here are some examples of some elements. So uh, aluminum is an example of an element, and there's our Bohr diagram for aluminum. And then here are some other examples of compounds, calcium carbonate, and their um, chemical formula, carbon dioxide, and its chemical formula, so on and so forth. So now that you have completed this um, podcast, you should be able to describe the three particles that make up an atom and their charges. You should be able to use the periodic table to determine and calculate the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom. And then you should be able to diagram the structure of an element using either a Bohr diagram or a Lewis dot structure. I hope this was helpful.